Welcome back, everybody, to the final installment of the New Zealand series, y'all. The greatest outdoor adventure of my life, the most intense action and just exploring some of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in nature. A big thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Y'all, I am a voracious consumer of content and mostly it is books and podcasts. I'm almost always listening to that when I'm on the road, traveling. And what Audible allows you to do is take whatever you are into, whether it's news, science, politics, hunting, fishing, whatever it is, take that with you in your ear and listen to it, consume it, while you're doing other things. You know, whether it's driving, if you're on the plane, if you're you know, going to the gym, going for a walk, run, whatever it is. I am not much of a novel person, but I love to read and listen to ways that I can improve my life. Because everybody knows I need a lot of help. One of the things I just listened to on the way back from New Zealand was Backyard Chickens, a beginner's guide to raising them from start to, well, not finish, but you get what I'm saying. So if you want to check out the unmatched library of content that Audible has and ways it can help you in your life, check it out at audible.com slash lakefortguy, or you can text lakefortguy to the number 500-500 on your mobile device and start your 30-day free trial, plus you get one audiobook selection and you get two Audible Originals, which is an ever-changing list of cultivated books by Audible. Now, cautionary tale on this video, if you ever encounter yourself in front of a geothermal pool, definitely don't dive in head first. You'll see why. Check it out. Stepping out of the cabin on our last great adventure here. Something I haven't shown y'all, I'm gonna show you here in a second. It's really cool and it's why they built this place. Got our uh, skull cap right there, looking good. And we got our cape that's dripping dry. Hopefully uh, we'll lessen the load on the way back. We gotta carry all that. So I'm currently in my underwear right now. Very windy, bear with me with the wind noise. But the reason this cabin was built here is because of the geothermal pools that are around it. So there's these natural, you know, creeks, rivers that run all through here. A lot of the water coming from up in the mountains, it's glacial, comes down, and you have these beautiful rivers and streams that we've been drinking from all week, unfiltered. So it's really a pretty neat deal. But then you have these geothermal pools welling up from deep underground that are hot and uh, you don't want to drink from those. There's actually some dangerous bacteria in the water. Uh, if it gets up your nose, you can get uh, really bad like meningitis kind of, I think that's what it's called. Anyways, it can kill you. It's fatal in all instances pretty much. So don't want to stick your head underwater. But what I'm going to do is get in this pool and just relax my joints from this <laughs> epic hike down that I had yesterday. And as we're preparing uh, to go down again, we're waiting out the weather right now currently to, uh, so we're not gonna get rained on and so these creeks are not gonna sweep us away. But as soon as the weather clears, clears we gotta trek back down. All these little streams and stuff, really, really cool. A lot of natural formations, but some are also built in. And as you get right here, like this water, is warm right here it should be it's flowing down yeah, it's semi-warm semi-warm as we get closer to the source it's gonna be really warm i currently don't have a towel so it's gonna be rough but the water is gonna be around 100 degrees so i should be hot when i get out as we get to right here you can see the steam coming and this water is gonna be hot that water's hot right there Woo! like seriously like singeing my feet hot Wow. Oh my gosh, it's hot. It's so hot. Okay, y'all, here we are inside of a thermal pool, also known as a nature hot tub. This water ranges from anywhere from like 90 degrees all the way up to 120, maybe more, as it's flowing in from the side over here. It kind of flows in from there. You can see the steam. There's other pools up higher that are like super hot that you can't even get in. This one's tolerable. And look at the view. It's absolutely nuts. You got snow up there, you have the streams coming down, and then you're sitting in a pool, a thermal pool. 
it's only a couple of feet deep so i'm just sitting down on my butt right now and it's not clear like it's it'd be like a lake and there's a silty bottom and apparently there's bacteria in here that will get up your nose if you dunk your head up under, under eh. definitely don't want to stick your head underwater because there's bacteria and stuff that live in here that can get up in your brain and kill you i definitely don't need that i've already got enough brain problems maybe it would cure me i don't know get up there and eat willis but anyway this view is just absolutely absurd and then it's this is the main attraction for up here so a lot of people hike in you know it's it's a long hike it's over 10 miles you get here and then you can kind of relax in the pools and enjoy the view no one can argue with that view right there you're looking at you know the mountains the snow and we actually have the clouds uh, kind of clearing right now and the rain is clearing out so we might actually have an opportunity to go hunt again uh, for me i'm done like i've experienced the ultimate i got to kill a uh, a giant tar i'm done i really want my buddy jt to have another chance um, I, and he might actually go out with Todd, just depending on the weather. And then I'm going to hike out and just go at a little bit slower pace because yeah, I'm carrying a huge pack. I'm going to be slow. So that's going to take me like an all day kind of adventure. So I'm just up here resting my joints, kind of, you know, just enjoying the pool. This is an added bonus for the hunt and uh, just something really, really cool to experience in nature that I've never seen before. So a nice little thing to enjoy. Just don't get too close to that little steamy area over there. Turn you into a lobster. Good day, everybody. Got a good rest in the hot pools and needed it. Honestly, the boots are still a little wet. We had to give ourselves a day for the, the rain to go away and we've got a little window where we can get back down the mountain. So the pack is ready to go and now it is time to put the cape and the horns in. What do you got there? That's like a... Got a Kuyu, uh, just a quarter meat bag. Let it hang overnight so some of the weight would come out, but it's still pretty daggum heavy. There's a lot of hair, it's probably like five pounds of hair. Okay, it's a good probably 20 pounds or so right there. Basically, I'm, I mean, I've never done this, and uh, Pat came with instructions, but you know, most people just throw away instructions. I'm one of those people. Reattach the straps where it makes a little opening in the back. Jammer on down in there. Jammer on in. You want most of the weight to be kind of right against your back. That's why they do that. So it's not like all the way back here and you that's how it was going down for me. It was, it was terrible. We'll take one last look at the mountains of southern New Zealand here. Thank you, Cabin, for being so warm and welcoming. New Zealand mountains, 4,500 feet. <laughs> Thank you for character building and making me a tougher human being. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you to one of my best friends, JT. And thank you guys for just being here, staying tuned. I always have to think about, what are the fishing freaks gonna think about this? I better break out the camera right here. I kinda don't want to, but I better for the fishing freaks. So thank you guys, you, you're always in the back of my mind. I think it was impossible to capture everything on camera here, just the majesty, like if you can ever come here, if you get the chance to come to New Zealand, you have to, have to, have to. So it's time for the long trek back with the heavy pack, but it's all downhill from here, literally. So, see you back at ground level. We saw a big bull up there last night, about 500 yards up there. Going down the bridge one last time, saying goodbye to Phil, our, our warden for the week. It still is pretty sketchy with a little extra weight on my back, though, I'll tell you that. Plus, carrying a camera in my hand right now. Yesterday, the day before, this would have been raging right below me. But today, it's not too bad. Look at that. Crazy. Crazy. If I had to do this 
the other day with my 85 pounds coming down and being toasted. I don't know. I'd probably fall over. It's still pretty shaky. <laughs> so you got your bow ready just in case? Nope. Just got it. Just yep, packed it up. Now. Okay. Yep, it Tired for the trip. Yep. It's time for a beer. A nice tasty beer. Pay a lot for a Shinerbach or Cold Cougars right now. Ah. Woo! About a quarter way down the mountain. I think New Zealand's gonna rear its ugly raining head again. Time for the rain cover. Oof. Trying to be extra careful not to fall so I don't break my horns on my pack. They're up at the top. And also, I mean, <laughs> that's a long ways down. See a little protein bar. Just had myself a little uh, electrolyte boost. Keep her going, we're making pretty good time today. The goal is to get down the mountain in less than five hours. And then we're gonna have time to drive about another four or five hours to, we gotta go to the uh, taxidermist to drop this hide off. And then we're also gonna be doing another hunt possibly. We have made it to where we first crossed the river, y'all. JT's butt crack is hanging out. Boy, it is. Hey, can we cheer sticks? Woo! Woo. Made job, it buddy. off. Made it off the entire mountain. I gotta do, let's check. Uh, we gotta cross this river, but let's see how far we went today. I'm guessing 11 and a quarter miles. Say 11 and a quarter. Yeah, that's my this guess. It's like guessing a big fish. Trip distance 11 1. 11 1. So just over 11. 11 1. So that's 22 miles just in and out that we've got. Woo hoo! <laughs> and our time, our time on this one has been uh, 6 hours and 36 minutes. Nice. 3 hours and 2 minutes moving, like straight moving. So took a lot of breaks, but got it done. It took us nine hours on the first day that was just me filming everything today it was just straight trucking now we're just gonna cross this river and we're home free getting some dry clothes it rained on us for about three hours so got cold had to put a jacket on we're feeling better now though we're gonna have the best greasy cheeseburger and beer you've ever seen in your life tar off the mountain officially after what me and todd crossed the other day this is nothing we're going to cross it straight boots. No need to change. We're here at the car now. Just don't care. It's a full blown crossing. Don't care. Yee! Full send across. The final, the final crossing. Boots soaked completely. Yes! And that man did it in a tank top. No worries. Toughest son of a gun ever, that Kiwi. Oh, the Subi. The Subaru. Never been so happy to see a green Subaru in my life. Yeah, good job, buddy. Take that tar still out of that tank. Oh. see you. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. Gosh, bud. Oh, I'm glad I can oh. tell you. Play, play some some job. Job. Yeah, that place is awesome. <laughs> We made it to, I don't even know what town this is, but it's all beautiful over here in New Zealand. I'm just ready to get home, see my girls, 
but what I experienced here up in the mountains of southern New Zealand was absolutely incredible. I will never come back here and do another bull tar hunt like I did because I will, I will never be able to top number one the size of this tar this is almost a 14 inch tar which is considered a trophy just the whole story that that whole experience really the whole week I'm never gonna top that for a bull tar I would love to come back here and experience all the other outdoor elements though uh, just just come here and do the hiking experience the, the fishing the fishing here we've passed so many streams and lakes and heard stories of you know, we stopped in a tavern, we heard stories of all these big brown trout, and uh, there's so much to do here. I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching these videos from here. I've enjoyed filming them. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die at one point, but I made it. Next time I see y'all, I'll be back in Texas. Love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.